Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SWOD webinar. Um, we are solid experts, your 3D experts, who will be presenting to you today SWOD, which essentially is a software. It, it, it's a software that could be broken down into two separate sections. Really, you have the SWOD design section and the SWOD cam section. Or in SWOD design, uh, you can create uh, fantastic pieces of furniture uh, quite easily and to be parametric. So furniture such as uh, bureaus uh, or desks or, or, or shelves, for example. While on the other side uh, with SWODCAM, you have the ability to register uh, machining information that comes from the models you created with SWOD design, along with a tools library as well, representing all the tools in your workshops to be able to register automatically uh, simulated paths and G codes directly for your CNCs. That also includes uh, aggregates, of course, as well as pre-made functions. So optimizing your virtual engineering needs in the wood industry down to the last grain. My name is Brandon Clark. I'm a solution engineer in automation here at uh, Solid Experts. So today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about who is Efficad, uh, modeling with SWOT design, of course, manufacturing with SWOT cam, and finally configuring with SWOT center, an extra portion of SWOT design that comes with the license. So um, before um, even going into the software, first I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the challenges of the market in the wood industry. Um, we, we can break down the three problematic areas or the three uh, challenging areas is first being of course the design area where in the wood industry if you're not making the same size uh, products every single time and mass producing them. And if you're working with architectures, uh, architects, for example, you always need flexibility in your methods of modeling and your methods of designing uh, when it comes to rendering the actual models uh, while respecting your panel processing and the woodworking oriented procedures, uh, uh, always being open to needing unique methods to establish uh, the work of a project. Um, aside from the design area of the challenges, we also have the fabrication side. So there's always managing the information that's passed into the CNC uh, machines, which in turn affects the overall process reliability and any other processes, of course, outside of even just CNC that are included in the manufacturing process. Um, managing this information can be a challenge in effectively getting the best process reliability you can need. And finally, the third aspect of it being the processes and management where at the more administrative level of dealing with the stocks of material or the communication between equipment and services, or for example, if you're communicating with an ERP uh, through XMLs for stock materials and making orders and so on and so forth, um, we generally see the biggest challenges divided into these three areas. So the question is, is, is there a, a software somewhere out there for us that can help address these three issues and improve them all in, in one shot? And of course, my solution to you is going to be SWOD. SWOD comes from Efficad, a company that has been uh, for 25 years, a supplier of CAD and CAM software solutions, uh, particularly for the wood sector, and has been uh, um, SolidWorks partner solution for over 15 years. They currently have a global uh, user community. They would started SWOD in 2010. Uh, which up till date now is installed in more than 250 companies and present more than 20 countries worldwide. If, if there's any uh, added value to this, we solid experts are going to be your reseller for uh, for SWOD design and SWOD cam and of course um, SWOD service, which is something I'll mention at the end. <clears throat> so what is SWOD? SWOD is uh, not a separate software you would install. It is an extra module you do install into SolidWorks. Uh, which allows you to do custom modeling, but parametric all at the same time in, in ease of use. Uh, that also provides you with a selection of materials, uh, libraries of connectors and standard frames, uh, as well as uh, edge bands as well, which I'll show you a little bit um, shortly. And all of this has the ability to adjust accordingly, depending on how you change the superior dimensions or even the inferior dimensions of your, your cabinet or your, your wardrobe or your bureau or whatever it is you're designing. And with the smart functions that are implemented within SWOOD, it allows the change of the model to happen fluidly with no errors. So what do we get from SWOOD design? What does it have to offer? Uh, to start, of course, cabinets and frames. Uh, SWOOD boxes, which I'll explain what those are in a few uh, seconds. 
We of course have a variety of panels we can have in a library, edge bands, molds, connectors, and finally materials for managing uh, your costs and so on. Um, instead of just talking about these options with you guys, uh, I've been building up a lot about this software up until this point. Um, I wanna go ahead and show you a little bit of a demonstration of how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my SOLIDWORKS here. And I'm gonna open up this frame that I had pre-opened for you guys. So generally speaking, you have your library of frames, your library of SWOOD boxes, your library of panels, uh, edge bands, uh, molds, uh, your connectors, and finally, of course, your materials. This, what we see here, is just a basic template of SWOOD. Yes, there are options for uh, English as well. Um, and generally speaking, whether you're a company who plans on using this software to create your standard products and make it easier to, to copy and send off the orders, or to always create custom solutions, uh, you could always start off with different templates. This is the most basic template in itself. And to show you how to make a frame or a cabinet very fast, uh, I'm going to go ahead to my panel selection here, where I'd have all the panels available to me. I'm going to go ahead and insert a copy of it. which now it asked me where to place it. And because I'm doing this quickly for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and use the reference uh, positioning method. So I'm gonna ask to place the panel on the left. It automatically pops into place. I don't need to do anything in terms of uh, mating it to specific planes. I like exactly where it is. I'm gonna constrain it by pressing C. I'm going to add another panel on the right here. Same concept, a panel on top except now I need to make some adjustments. So this is how you generally adjust a panel. You will pull on the arrows at the end towards the face you wish for it to be uh, made to. The rest of this looks fine to me, so I'm gonna lock that in place. And now I'd like to have a bottom to my, uh, my cabinet, uh, but I don't want it to be flush with the, the ends of the sides. I want it to have a distance of 150 millimeters from this bottom plane we see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Select the wrong panel there. There we go. Turn this on. Pull that in. Press C to lock everything down, but then I'm gonna go ahead and change my constraint here. My mate from a coincident to a distance mate at 150, obviously in the opposite direction as the first doesn't work. And now I've made my basic cabinet. Once I click OK up here, I have all of my panels being generated and created in the background. The computer appears to be running a little slow, ladies and gentlemen. I assure you the software works a lot faster than this. There we are. And there we have it. I've created a very basic cabinet. Now this could be my skeleton for future cabinets I'm going to create with even more detail, or I can make my final product right here, for example, by needing to use a door. So that's what gets me into the topic of SWOOD boxes, where SWOOD boxes essentially are packages that uh, allow you to insert multiple uh, features at the same time, uh, such as a door with its hinges, and with the hinges also come the machining that's going to be done to the side panels, or uh, you can have a a hanging bar on top with its brackets already inserted in as well. So what do I mean by that? Um, I'm going to go ahead and take myself a set of doors here. And I'm going to add a, a flat hinge single door. To do so, I would say insert the SWOOD box. And then automatically you see the whole area show up in green, but this can sense any given space that I wish, or I can select the planes themselves, and then automatically it will insert the door at its appropriate spacing with its hinges. And again, of course, if I do change the overall dimensions of this, um, this uh, cabinet here, then we're gonna see the door, of course, change with it. So I see now it's added in my hinges, it's added in my door. And if I go ahead and make this panel transparent, I could even show you that it is added in the machining into the panels as well for me, which that, can also be registered automatically with SWIT CAM, and you'll see that in a few short moments.
We also have our edge bands library where we can click and drag edge bands freely onto the model. Sorry about that. There we go, transparency. So I can go ahead and slide my edge band straight onto the model. And when it comes to the edge bands options, when it comes uh, in the wood industry, you of course have the option of adding on to the uh, length of the panel to have your edge band, or you can remove material off the panel to have your edge band fit on the inside of the overall dimensions, or you can have uh, the edge band not affect the overall dimension at all and not appear within the model. The molds work very similarly, of course, to the, uh, the edge bands, but it's the connectors that I look forward to showing you uh, in this demonstration today. With our connectors, and they can also be programmed to be smart connectors. If I add in some dowels here, for example, the dowel pattern, we see automatically, it gives me the different orientations and sets up my dowels as so. However, it's programmed to work based on the length of a face. So I could change the overall length of a face and we'll see the number of dowels update. So if I make this face transparent here now, and I go ahead and edit my overall depth of my case here, I'm gonna update this to 800. And as it rebuilds to the new depth, I have an automatic update of my positioning of my dowels. As they've now changed, they did not stay close to one reference point. So in terms of uh, everything within this list, the last point I wanted to cover for you was the materials aspect. Uh, materials can also be clicked and dragged onto your full assembly, or you can have them preset within your panels in advanced. And what this allows, once I glide it onto this panel here, it gives me the option between applying it to the entire assembly or just the panel specifically I dropped it on. In this case, I'll choose the entire assembly. And now I should expect a thickness of 12 millimeters all around except for the door, of course, because that that is not considered the panel in this case, it's considered a uh, part of the SWOOD box. And we can see down here, I have my thickness of 12 millimeters. So the general idea is that you can, you can optimize the speed at which you create uh, your, um, your models, or you can create standard models using a quicker technique like SWOOD and using the ease of copying uh, with SWOOD Center and SWOOD Service uh, to optimize overall your processes of purchasing and sending out your orders. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom through this right here. <clears throat> and now on to SWOOD Cam and nesting. Uh, for the most part today, I am gonna be demonstrating to you how SWOOD Cam more or less can uh, automatically pick up on machining that you do put uh, into your panels. Uh, as we have a lot of topics today, I don't have a demonstration for nesting, but please feel free to send us an email afterwards with all your questions. If you would like to see a direct example of nesting, we have a really cool one on hand for you. Um, generally speaking with SWDCAM, there's, uh, you have tool selection, we can calculate, uh, sorry, we can have a simulation calculated for us um, by using the automatic features that come within our libraries, and I'll show you that in a second. And from that, it will automatically generate a G code for us. Uh, of course, creating nesting, meaning we can uh, stop and place our panels together in the most optimized fashion for cut and cutting. But here I have a, a video uh, demonstrating exactly what's, uh, what I'm talking about when it comes to automatically picking up on holes. So. You saw how I added before the SWOOD box with the door, it added the hinges, and then it added holes into that side panel. Now in this case, we have a panel right here. On the left-hand side is where we'll configure our program. And on the right-hand side, we see we have our tools library that we've already loaded into CAM here. We also have our aggregates as well as our automatic functions. So coming back to our panel here, uh, let's say, because in this case, this one's not coming out of an assembly, we're gonna add some holes ourselves within this panel. Uh, we have a few pattern uh, pattern holes there laid out, as well as a pocket, and just add a little more complexity to, to forcing the software to think. We're not gonna make the pocket cut all the way through, we're gonna make it cut to a certain depth. So now that we have our pocket 10 millimeters in depth, we're gonna start by creating ourselves a program. Nice and easy. You choose the standards of your machines, of course. 
now we're setting up the positioning of our panel on the machine uh, with respect to the machine's axis. Now you do have the option of uh, inserting the entire machine into um, SWOT as well here for if you have the extra features like your vacuums or your beams and so on and so forth. If you want to include those properties uh, for a, a, an even better detailed machining process uh, that is there for you. Once we confirm our machine here, we're going to go ahead and also bear in mind the diameter of the, the, uh, the hole that we see here. If you have the tool in your library that can make it, then auto drill will work. It will pick up on the holes that are along the surface uh, of our panel and it will be able to calculate a route and drill those holes for us. The same principle goes for the pocket as well, because in this case, we're not using a drill for the pocket. Uh, we're gonna have to use the auto pocket function which will now detect any removals of material on the surface um, of a panel that is not a hole by definition. As you can see here is based on the tool it took and the optimized uh, and the settings we've optimized in, in our example for you, it established the right tool for the job and the right path to take to create the right pocket. And of course it can go into further detail to get those sharper corners. But that's the general uh, idea of it is you can load everything you create at the final assembly uh, to pre-have SWIDCAM within it so that by the time you finish your assembly, it's already pretty much registered your CNC code. And that gets me to my last part, uh, that one of the last parts of, um, uh, of uh, SWID that's really, that's extremely useful in the sense that we can generate reports. Uh, we can export any data that we make from an assembly, uh, the, the stock used in or the material and hardware. And all of this can be exported in the format of CSV, TXD, and XML, which allows for easier communications between ERP systems, for example. Uh, what comes with our report, uh, we can have stock lists, uh, material hardware lists, we can have drawings, we can have overall costs, we can have labels, and to show how our report is generated, I'm gonna return back here in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to use this same frame that I have right here for you. I'm gonna click on generate a report. Now, in some cases it could take a little bit of time, which is why I didn't wanna take a much bigger model um, because it needs to go and find every single panel, all of its main dimensions, every single piece of hardware I have, and then it has to establish in the overall document. Now, um, what you're about to see in this report it's not a fixed report. It comes from a CFG file that we can pre we can program however we want to make a report that looks specifically to our needs. Generally, what you're going to see here is what comes stock with it. Just give it an extra second here. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I appear to be having a bit of a slowdown on my computer. It is much faster than this. Oh boy. There we go. I think I have a, some sort of a scan running in the background here. Come on. I think I have something going on in my computer here. Sorry for the technical difficulties here, folks. Okay. Oh boy. So um, 
Meanwhile, while I wait for this, uh, that's where I was getting, um, is that you have the ability to generate full reports, uh, which essentially, if you take the extra time to input all your costs uh, within all your materials, all of your hardwares, uh, all of your panels and stock and so on and so forth, you can generate relatively accurate documents that would tell you exactly how much it will cost um, in order to do uh, each and every single project you're working on. And the next section here, the, or the last section that I want to show you, and I'll show you in just a section, uh, in just a second, we have the SWOOD Center, which will allow you to take pre-made products that you've already done uh, with SWOOD and take control of them, similarly to controlling a model parametrically with custom properties and SOLIDWORKS, except uh, with much more ease of use, uh, a lot more straightforward, and it even comes with its own custom script editor, which allows you to write intelligent rules that can work all together within your interface. Now, I have a video demonstrating that at the moment. It's, a, it's, a, it's nothing too fancy here. The general concept is that you're looking to take control over certain dimensions, but you don't, you're don't. you not just restricted to dimensions. You can control configurations. You can control suppression states of panels, of SWOOD boxes, of planes. Uh, you can control, um, for example, uh, certain types of codes, uh, product lists, order, order codes as well, with the options that you put within SWOOD Center, this can be saved automatically into a model. And what this allows for is for, um, for companies, like I'd mentioned, where they constantly sell similar products with maybe minor changes in dimensions, but of course the information for each client has to be changed and changed and changed. So to save on time, this can be used as a fantastic tool for quickly making the product needed, entering the information required, and then a simple uh, copy and save. And remember, like I said, you could include drawings with these. And these do, of course, get copied in the process as well. So like we see here, I, I've created a switch that can turn, door, turn the doors on, turn the doors off. I control the overall dimensions like usual. Uh, we could see here that if I go ahead and change my height out to 2000, that those holes will automatically adjust, which proves my point from before that when you install a SWOOD box, it always looks for the maximum area that it's given and it will constantly change and according to the height of the overall assembly that's required or the space that's given, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and check back in SOLIDWORKS here. I got my report. I'm gonna go ahead into my documents here and you can see the report and details it'll give you the entire assembly as is uh if i had a, a a drawing loaded in with it it would give me these as the following views but these of course can be adjusted as i please all the hardware that can be found within the overall assembly i apparently have five dowels and only three hinges at the cost of free which is fantastic and in the summary page this is what i was talking about where if you take the time to add in all of your information for your pricing and your sizing you can get a full summary of all your panels laminates hardwoods edge, wedge, ba edge bands uh glass hardware and programs all together in one shot and that's only one report of the many that you can set up within your uh report config file um like I mentioned, you could have your saw cuts, you could have your cabinet lists, you could even divide up your panels into, in, for example, if you want them grouped in same size uh, filters. So the flexibility that comes from using uh, SWOOD, uh, SWOOD report, especially when it comes to the what you saw here with SWOOD Center, every time you generate a new report based on what's uh, been changed, allows for ease of transfer of information between departments when it comes to your programs and your, your labels and so on and so forth. And finally, the last part of this, before taking too much of all your time, ladies and gentlemen, is layouts. For you architects out there who are looking for uh, perhaps an easier way to set up your projects, to have a, an easy 3D layout of uh, how things will fit and being able to generate full uh, reports of how much your whole projects will cost, then allow me to show you how the layout feature works within SOLIDWORKS. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Close this one here as I don't need it anymore. There we go. I have another uh, case here that I want to use for the following example. So I'm going to open up my assembly here. And this essentially would be a really tiny room with just two walls. And I've drawn out the layout of how I want my uh, 
my cabinets to fall. I come over here to my cabinet library. Now, like I said, you can either use uh, Swood Center to make the ultimate type of uh, cabinet that can fit however you want, or you could have a library of um, uh, frames available to you. Say I want this frame and I want to have it uh, three times, then it's as simple as going to insert copy. It will then copy whatever uh, frame I've wanted from the library and give it its own new file uh, unique name so that the communication is no longer uh, established between the two, allowing us to be free with them. And then it's a matter of selecting four main points. I have my origin, my X, my Y, and of course my Z, which is described with a 3D sketch. Once I've confirmed my choice, then it will then copy and load the, um, the cabinet into the, uh, the example or the assembly in this case. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and add a second one. And you see, it really is as simple as just four clicks. Now, if you had, you, you can make curved uh, cabinets, you can make uh, 90 degree cabinets, you can make them however you're, uh, however you would like. And that essentially builds onto the value of creating layouts with SWOOD. Because from there, if you have your preset of all your shapes, you, can, you can't you uh, can begin to imagine the different types of kitchens that you can uh, design using just the layouts feature of SWOOD. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I pulled this up way too early. So as you can see, I've inserted the second one here. And just as a last note, if I took a frame that already had Swood Center uh, implemented on it, and if I go to edit an individual assembly, my Swood Center parameters will all be there. So if I want, I could also adjust one frame to be completely different from the other. By coming into my parameters here on the side, which you can see, you can add a lot within within one and let's just say I want a closed top which based on the performance of my computer today might take a second or two generally though this case this size uh, I keep saying case this frame is generally very quick with how it changes uh, you're not it, there are of course limitations in programming in every single case however the strength of the script editor within SWOOD is absolutely fantastic with the work that it can do and it certainly makes your life a lot easier when you have adjustability within one assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my other assembly. And I'm hoping I should see a change there. Okay. So now it's changed in this one. If I come back to my other one. Oh my God, today. There we go. I again apologize for my technical uh, for the technical difficulties today. But as you can see, folks, I was able to retain my SWOOD center parameters, and I can afford to change my cabinets how I please, even after they've been copied. So with that said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say thank you very much for having attended this um, this webinar on SWOOD today. Um, before letting you go, though, I just want to say if everything I've mentioned about the potential with SWOOD wasn't enough to spin your thoughts earlier today, then at least allow me to invite you to our the Solid Experts site. Uh, we are currently having a promotion. Uh, get 50% off on a SWOOD design uh, with the purchase of a SWOOD bundle. This promotion is going until May 28th. I assure you, if you are a company that works in the wood industry, this is a software that is for you, and it is a software that can do a lot for you. With that said, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having come uh, to listen to me today. And with that, I wish you a great rest of the day.